Hey guys, so this is my portable fish finder. Um, the last update I did on this guy was I added in the Garmin Panoptics Live Scope. So I just finished putting everything into here. I wanted to make a video of throwing everything in, but if you've ever put Live Scope into this large portable ice fishing kit, you know how tough it is. I put the wires in and I would remove them. I probably put everything in two or three times. It's just, there's no room in here. It's amazing how you actually fit it in here, but it's such a process of just trial and error. So I'll just show you the end result and kind of tell you where the wires are. So here it is, as you can see, the bag is closed, which is not easy to close, by the way. This is super tight. This bag will have to stretch quite a bit to make it easy to close. So let's open them up. So let's take this guy. And there we go. So the first thing you probably notice is I have these rocker switches at the top here. The left rocker switch here is the main power and the right one here is for live scope only. So the reason why I have one for the main power is because when you have the battery plugged into your electronics and your, your electronics are turned off, there's still going to be some draw coming from the battery. It's called parasitic draw. So let's say you're done fishing for the day and your battery is dead and you go home and you're tired, you go to sleep and then you forget about the battery and the fish finder for two weeks or so and everything's connected. And then in that time, your battery can get drained, which will damage the battery. So to prevent that, I have this master switch here. So what if I turn this guy off, no power at all will go to live scope or to the head unit. And therefore that will help protect my battery. Um, so if you're familiar with, um, I guess, Milwaukee or Dewalt or any of those power tool batteries, uh, a lot of them run at 18 volts. But uh, what happens is when they run with a power tool, the power tool manages the power. So there is some communication between the two of them when the power tool recognizes that the voltage is lower than a certain point, it'll automatically shut off to protect the battery. Since in my case here, I'm running a Milwaukee battery, I don't have the communication that the power tools have. So therefore I have to manage the, the safety of the battery myself. And I'll show you how I do that when I turn on the system here. So in the front here, um, there's tons and tons of wires. So the back here, the only wire I have around the handle here is the live scope cable. Um, just because this is such a hefty cable, it needs its own room here. So that's the only one hanging off here. So on the left here, inside the pouch, here, I'll... this is the power cable. This one is pretty long, so it wraps up a few times. Then underneath the screen here, I have a transducer cable. This is the transducer for the GT52. This one comes with the 95SV. And then underneath that here is the network cable. So there's a ton of room there, so why not utilize the room to, to house your cables? And that's where they all sit. So on the right side here, um, just nothing. And that's all the cables there are. Then I have my rocker switch for main power, my rocker switch for live scope. And the reason why I have the live scope switch is, let's say I'm running low on power and there's a few more hours in the day I want to fish, I could just turn off live scope only and only use the fish finder. Uh, live scope uses quite a bit of power, so um, if you're fishing and you're running out of power, it's better just to run the fish, fire, fish finder only. All right, let's go to the back now. So here's the back of the unit. Um, it's pretty empty. I have the fuse here. This one comes with the large portable ice fishing kit. This is five amps. This one cable here, this is the power cable coming from the live scope, 7.5 amps. It doesn't really matter, the whole system runs at a 5 amps, uh, so we should be okay with this one. Um, so right here I have one of these dock connectors for the Milwaukee M18 battery. Uh, this guy I made myself, so I found some guy in town that had a 3D printer, and the plans for these docks are everywhere. If you Google them, you can find the 3D schematics for them. And just I sent them over to him. He said, "Yep, I'll build you one." He built me this guy for seven bucks. I took it and wired in my cables, and then wired my cables into here. 
So there's a bunch of cables everywhere hanging around. They're okay for the most part. I'll have to kind of insulate some of these up just to make sure I don't short. I'll put like a wiring diagram of everything that I've wired up here, including the rocker switches. So if you're interested, it'll probably be at the end of the video. One thing I will show you is there's been a lot of talk about whether the Echo Maps will work with a 20 volt battery. So this is Milwaukee M18, nine amp hours. Um, this actually outputs at 20 volts. So when I got this guy brand new earlier today, he ran at 16 volts, fully charged 20.6 volts. Uh, the reason why I chose the M, I mean the nine amp hours, is because I could get two nine amp hour batteries for basically the same price of a 12 amp hour M18. It's kind of funny how it is. I think it's just a Canadian thing at the moment. Um, but yeah, let's run this guy. So right now, my switches are all off and I'll put this guy into the dock here. Um, it's not fully secure at the moment and I've, it, it actually works pretty well, but uh, I may just yeah, secure it somehow. So let's throw this guy down here. And it fits perfectly too. Um, if you're looking for the M12 or like the 12 amp battery, that one's actually a little wider, so it may not fit in here. I haven't actually tried it myself, but I know the nine fits for sure. Um, okay, so let's close up the back here and move to the front. I should also note that the cable length is five feet coming out of the bag, just in case you're wondering. Okay, so now we are connected with power. So let's turn this guy on. So the first thing I will need to do is I'll have to turn on the master power. Turn that guy on and then power them up. Okay, so far so good. That just means that we haven't blown up yet. And then when he turns on, we can see how much voltage he is running. So here we go. So right now you can see there, hopefully, that we are running at 20.5 volts. So it does work. And sonar, traditional, I guess there's actually really nothing going on because the transducer is sitting on my desk. Side view, okay. And you'll probably notice that panoptics is not an option at the moment. So let's turn on a live scope. So in the back here, if you can see, you can still see the GLS 10 box, which is a live scope box. And there's normally a light that blinks when it's on. So let's turn it on. So live scope, let's go. So I put a LED there just cause they kind of look nice. No other reason really. So let's wait for the light to turn on. Oops, you saw a blink there. And now let's wait for the head unit to recognize that panoptics is connected. There, let me just place the camera down. Okay, there you go. I know the screen is not the best here, uh, but here you go. Panoptics now shows up. Click on that, and there we go. Panoptics, and you can see here our voltage came down at 20.4. Um, I mentioned earlier that we need to protect the battery as best we can. So, because there's no system that regulates the power like the Milwaukee Power Tools does, the head unit will have to do it itself. So, when you run a Milwaukee Power Tool, the power the tool will automatically shut off when it reaches about 15 volts because after that if you fully discharge a lithium ion battery you will ruin it and reduce the, uh, the life of the battery so what you could do is you go to your settings you go to alarms and then you go to uh, system and device voltage and change change your voltage so right now i have mine to alarm at I know it's hard to see there, there's a one in that little box. 15.5 volts. So that gives me a heads up to say, okay, my battery is gonna die. If I use any more, I'm going to ruin the battery. So at this point, it's a good idea to shut down completely, turn off five scope and just fish with the echo maps only, or change up the battery. Just something to do and make sure that you do. Um, these batteries are finicky. So, and they're not cheap, so protect them as best as you can. Okay, so everything is running at the moment. So let's say I'm fishing and battery's almost dead. Okay, I'd rather keep fishing with just the fish finder. So let's kill live scope. So when you kill live scope, the system takes a second and it realizes that 
panoptics transducer is disconnected. Okay, and we're good. And so we just fish this way. The amp draw on just the head unit is significantly less. I think the total amp draw roughly is gonna be three to four amps total. Um, so just plenty to be aware when you actually decide on the battery. And then let's do a full power kill. Uh, so let's see, I'm done fishing for the day. I can turn them off, of course, I'll do that. And then I'll shut the main thing off. But just to show you, we turn off the main power here and everything is now completely dead. There is no power going to the system at all. And that's what we want to reduce any parasitic draw that the electronics will have. And that's basically the rundown of my Panoptics portable install here. I haven't run, uh, run them on my inflatable boat yet, but when I do, I'll show you that and I'll show you how I rigged up the transducer and stuff again. Once again, guys, thanks for watching.